music artists and entrepreneurs, what's good? Mike Sarge here from MikeSarge.com and today I'm going to get into the one question many of you are asking. How do I find my sound? How do I find my style? How do I find my identity as a music artist or entrepreneur? So you don't want to miss this one, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's work. Salutes to that. Now, I completely understand where many of you guys are coming from. I mean, regardless of you're a singer-songwriter, a rapper, a musician, maybe even a music producer, or someone that's an entrepreneur trying to start their own company, or you're an inspiring author, we all want something similar. And that's to really stand out. That's for people to see our product, to hear our music, to see our content and go, man, there's no one else like them. So today, I'm going to give you guys a couple tips on how you can separate yourself as a music artist or an entrepreneur. Number one. You have to start creating, period. Now look, I know many of you guys clicked on this video and it said how to find your sound. But the truth is, you can't find a sound. You develop a sound. So the next question is, how in the world do I develop a sound? To be honest, it's not as complicated as it seems and I'm gonna give you guys a quick example to help explain this a little bit. For any of you that played any type of organized sports, you know that the coaches at some point are going to tell you, hey, make sure you hit the weight room. Why? Because you got to hit the bench press. You got to hit them squats. You got to hit the deadlifts. And then they would tell you after that you got to make sure that you leave the weight room and go run. So go hit the ball court, go hit the field and make sure that you work that out. Now, what does that have to do with you, the music artist, the entrepreneur? You cannot just gain new skills. You cannot just gain knowledge without actually applying it. So, for example, me as a basketball player, there's no way that I can hit bench press and squats and deadlifts all summer long and then get to the season and expect, and expect my shot to be looking nice, right? I actually have to work on that shot because now I've got extra muscles that I didn't have before and I need to learn how to... Uh, how to work that out with the movements of my particular sport. And I'm saying as a creative, as a music artist, as an entrepreneur, you cannot just gain knowledge. You have to actually apply it. So for music artists, that means you need to go out and actually take the first step and release music. You cannot be hoarding uh, 50 to 100 songs that no one has ever heard. You have to release it. And that way, you can honestly figure out who you are as an artist. People will actually be able to tell you what your strengths and your weaknesses are, but you'll never figure that out unless you actually apply it, right? We're developing something here. You're not finding it, you're developing it. And you have to do that, but it starts with creating first, period. Number two, try new things. Stop limiting yourself when it comes to your content. There were tons of things for you to talk about, tons of things for you to sing and rap about and do content on. You could talk about your life, your successes, your failures, your you know funny stories. You could talk about things related to your race or your religion or even your views on politics, learning experiences, uh, relationships. There are tons of things for you to talk about. But many times, especially those of us who have been doing it a little while, feel like, well, I've already done the song about this. I've already rapped about this. And now there's nothing for else for me to talk about because I've already talked about my opinion in regards to that. And I'm letting you know that eh, you're wrong. I'm letting you know you're wrong right now and I'm going to help you out though. I'm not going to just tell you you're wrong. I'm going to give you some tips. All right, let's just say you wanted to do a song on relationships, right? And you said, well, I've already done a song about my boyfriend or my girlfriend or my, my wife or my husband. There's nothing else I can talk about. Wrong. There are tons of other things in regards to relationships that you can talk about. So let's look at this list real quick. Well, if we're talking about relationships, you could do a song on what it feels like to be backstabbed. That has something to do with relationships. You could also do a song on the first time that you had a crush on someone. That has something to do with relationships. Those times where you feel alone and you don't feel like anyone else supports you, that has to do with relationships. That has to do with people. Those times where you felt confused on whether someone likes you or not, that has something to do with relationships. So relationships doesn't have to necessarily have to do with love. It could just have to do with your interactions with people every single day, whether it's your coworkers, your family, your friends, things like that. Open up your open up your mind. Stop putting yourself in a box and saying, I can only talk about these certain things. No, there are bevy things that you can talk about and just apply that to all the other topics that I brought up earlier. Number three, the HOF method. 
All right, so this is a method that I've actually used to help out tons of other artists, tons of other creatives and entrepreneurs help develop and figure out their sound and style. So what's the HOF method? HOF stands for Hall of Fame. Basically, all this is is a list of your top influences, all right? People that inspire you to do what you do. So what I want you to do is make a list of your top 10 influences, your top 10 influences, those that inspire you to do what you do now. They can be past or present, but preferably you wouldn't want to have you want to have more present than past. So out of the ten, I would like for you guys to have at least six or seven out of your influences be more in the present. But if you don't, that's okay. This method will still work for you. So let's go ahead and take the first step. Go ahead and write down your top ten influences. They don't have to even be in the same genre as you. Just put them down and pause this video if you need to. All right. So now you have your list. You have your list of your top 10 influences regardless of genre past or present so what are we going to do now now we're going to set up our four categories for our method and for music artists these are the four categories lyrics and content production hooks and chorus style so now you have your four categories lyrics basically what i'm telling you is if you took away the production if you took away the beat and you had to just study someone's lyrics who would you put in that category? That is the lyrics and content category. Production, basically the same thing. If you take away the lyrics and you're just listening to the beat and really vibing to it, who would you throw into this category? So this is for production. For hooks and chorus, same thing. If you had to just go off of someone's hooks, if you know every time you listen to this particular song, you don't even really pay attention to the lyrics, you just love the chorus part, what artist or influence would you put in this category? And style. Every artist has a different style. Some are more witty, some have that gangster feel, they bring that swagger to it. More people are more humble, more people are more inspirational. So go ahead and figure out whose style do you like the most? Whose style do you really look at and go, man, I love the way that they do it. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to look at your list of influences and you're going to take two or three of them and put them in these categories. For example, if you looked at the categories for lyrics and content and then maybe hooks and you said, huh, I think Drake needs to go in my category, my subcategories for having the best lyrics and being the best at doing hooks. All right, cool, awesome. You can put Drake there if you want to. This is just an example. But that means you can no longer use Drake. So what I'm saying to you is once you've put a, a particular artist in a slot, if they're, they cannot be in any more than two categories. Now, why do I do this? Because this is going to prevent you from sounding like that artist. If all you do is study one particular artist or two particular artists, all you're going to do is sound like them. So go ahead, fill out your list real quick. Again, pause the video if you need to do it. Now, once you have your list filled out, all you're going to do is make sure that when you are listening to these artists, you are studying them in that particular category. So if I put an artist in lyrics and content, when I, whenever I listen to them, I'm going to start studying the way that they write, the way that they do metaphors, the way that they do this, the way that they do that, the way that they pick their production and their sound and things like that. I am studying them. And again, with that rule, with not having a particular person more than twice, now you have a bigger pool of people that you're studying from and you're developing that sound. So not only now are you studying uh, other people that you consider to be great, well, if you're creating like the very first step, you are also figuring out what your own strengths and weaknesses are. So then you can hone in on your strengths and then add in from the greatest of all time. Because remember, this is your HOF list. This is your Hall of Fame list. No one else needs to influence your list. So, what did you think? Was the information helpful? If so, go ahead and hit that like button and then hit that subscribe button so you get notified anytime I drop a brand new video. Also, if there's a topic that you would like me to do in the future, please leave a comment below. I do read my comments and I would love to get y'all's feedback on things that you personally want to hear about and get help on. So, as always, be you, enjoy your life, live authentic. Salute to that. Catch y'all later.